Okay, a little scary, a little different, but Kalina just called out sick and she filmed. So I'm Eric. Uh, you've never heard me before, never seen me before. Uh, but I'm usually the person making stuff on camera. And this week, what we're gonna do is right down there, answer one of the most asked questions we get. That's how we design the wallets that we make on the screen. Uh, so let's get into it. So we're gonna design a custom wallet today for a friend of mine. And uh, I brought out just a few things to show you. Um, you know, one of the cool things about getting involved in leather work is that you're able to make things that you can do a stock custom line. You can just love making stuff and design the one thing that you think is um, gonna work for a lot of people, or you can go the customer and you can make things a little bit different for everybody. The problem with making things a little bit different every time is that that design process takes time. So you have to learn to be efficient. Um, you know, you can make big stuff like this. This is a real big wallet, bulky. It's almost a fashion piece in itself. You know, you're gonna see it while you're carrying it. You can do really slim stuff like this that holds a fair amount, but fits in a front pocket. Uh, you know, you have your classic bifold wallets, but even these can be customized thousands of different ways. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through my process. Uh, and this is something that I've been doing for uh, almost 15 years. And what I've really learned how to do is sort of become, have a very efficient design process so that I can spend the bare minimum amount of time on the design and get into making. Um, and that does come with a little experience. You learn how big pockets have to be and stuff, but we'll go through that um, as I get into designing this wallet. So I always start with two foundation questions, and these are those questions. The first is, how is it going to be used? Now, what that means is, of course, people are going to carry things, but what is their lifestyle like? Is this going to be a piece that um, lives in a bag, or is it going to be a piece that's in the back pocket of a construction worker, or is it going to be, in the case of something like this, is it going to be hanging out of the pocket where this is rubbed and exposed on chairs and all that kind of stuff? That's important because that sort of dictates what materials you're going to go with. Um, you're not going to go with say a super thin calf skin if it's going to be um, with someone that is pouring concrete all day um, but you can go a little bit more luxurious if it's going to be more of a, a, a show piece that's going to be treated a little bit more gentle and the second question i think everybody knows is what does it need to hold so are we holding cash are we holding cards um, and that's where we're going to start with this project and so here's our audit for my buddy who we're making this wallet for um, I just ask him those two questions, you know, and I know him, so I know that he's a woodworker. Um, and he carries a bifold wallet in his back pocket. Um, I usually just ask, I say, hey, let me see the wallet that you're carrying now. And uh, we look through it together, and, you know, he needs six to ten cards, eight to ten cards. He carries a bit of paper. He doesn't usually carry bills, but he likes to have a spot to carry them. Um, so that kind of guides what what we need to hold in this piece. Um, the next thing I do after those two questions are answered is I go down to preferences and I say, well, what are you, what are you thinking? And he really likes a bifold design, which is, you know, something like this. This is one of our stock bifolds, but he wants it a little bit thinner than our stock pieces. So that's why we're going custom. Um, the next thing is um, his, his girlfriend has one of our wallets in natural veg tan, and she's really liked how it's aged and patinaed over the past few years. And so that's what he wants as well. So I pulled... Um, you know, we have a tumbled veg tan, and we have uh, just the regular Herman Oak veg tan, and he likes the, the regular one. It, it provides a little more structure. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. And the only other um, guideline he gave me is that he wants it kind of slim. You know, it's still bifold. He still knows that he's going to have a little bulk, but he's not really looking for something, um, you know, to have each individual card stacked like this. Uh, he's more open to kind of one pocket or two pockets that hold multiple cards at once. And that's important to find out because some people really like all their cards individually separated some people really don't care and they'll just throw them all in one if it means a little less bulk um, and so that's the direction that we're going to go this is going to guide what we're going to do next which is to start our sketch all right so we have paper um, i usually do pencil but i'm going to do sharpie because i think it probably shows up better on the screen um, so we have all those details and now what we're going to start to do is we're going to just start to sort of roughly draw. Now, I go function first and then form, right? Um, and so for bifold, uh, we're going to be holding American currency. And 
a lot of people will start designing a bifold uh, with the American current with the currency. But really, what you have to do is you have to start with, uh, there's another blockbuster card. Um, you have to start with the card because as you can see, two cards, if you're gonna be doing a bifold, two cards is much wider than a bill. So by default, if you design a bifold where cards fit horizontally on each side, the bill's gonna fit, um, unless you're only doing one card tall, and then you have to account for the height of the bill. But we're gonna be doing a couple cards here. So the bill is almost, not consequential at all, uh, we don't really need to think about that because it's going to fit. We're worried about the cards. So we're going to grab a ruler here and uh, you kind of get this down when you've been doing it for a while. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure a card and as you can see it's about three and three eighths wide. So three, three eighths wide and it's going to be about uh, one, two and two and one eighth. Two and one eighth. So we're going three and three eighths by two and one eighth is the measurement of a card. It's not the measurement of the pocket. You have to add a bit of, um, of tolerance on all the sides. But this is a good start for us because now we know that whatever we make on the inside of the wallet, we have to hold things that are these measurements. Um, and so with that, now we're gonna start by designing the inside of the wallet first. Okay, so once we go to paper, tolerances come into play, right? And what that means is that not only do we need the width of the card in our drawing, but we need the width of the stitch line as well. And you can, what you can do is you can take your calipers and you can kind of measure what width that you like to use. And this is gonna be the distance from the edge to the stitch line itself, right? And I always suggest using scrap leather. It doesn't really matter what type of leather, the thickness is sort of what's more important. And when you have it in your hands and you can cut different square shapes and stuff, um, it's a really good design tool because then what you can do is you can be, in a physical sense, right? You can put a couple cards down and you can say, okay, I'm gonna put this over and you know I have my stitch line and I have a little bit extra. And so this is gonna work well for me. Over time, um, I've learned that I like a four inch wide card pocket. And that gives me plenty of room um, for my stitch line for a little trimming, uh, room as well on the edges if I need to. And it also allows for one card to fit fairly flat, but you can also, if you want to, you can put two or three cards in and you're not gonna be just bulging the pocket. The leather's not gonna be stretching. It'll mold nicely. And so we're gonna go with a four inch wide card pocket. Now we have our measurement written down, right? So now we know we have a four inch wide card pocket. We know we want two next to each other. So we have bare minimum, we're gonna be eight inches across, but that takes into account our stitch line, but it doesn't take into account the center measurement. Now the bifold design specifically, and of course this information is gonna be different depending on what you're designing. A bifold specifically needs some space in between to allow the wallet to close. With a bifold design on the interior, you can choose to have pockets under pockets, or you can have no, uh, just a single plane of pockets. In this design, you see there's no pocket under here. So this can be fairly small, this gap, because all it needs to provide is space for the wallet to close. What we want to do is we want our wallet to have a pocket underneath. They're called hidden pockets sometimes. So when you do that, you need to have a little bit extra room. And now if we look at the difference between the two, it's about a quarter inch, I think. Um, and so we're going to keep in mind that we want a fairly large tolerance here, but not large enough where it makes this wallet super long and kind of weird to, to carry. If you don't have wallets made already to measure off of, I'll show you how I do it, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take one of my scraps of leather and I'm gonna put it like this. Then I'm gonna put my ruler right here, okay? So if I have this card and I kinda go like this, and, and you can do this a lot of different ways, this probably looks super silly, but it does help. So, you know, you see this little gap here and I can already feel if I hold these down with my hands, if this was solid, this is gonna be kind of easy to get in, but to get it out, once this is in there, I'm not gonna be able to get my fingers under there. So what I do is I move it back until I feel, and you have to remember this is gonna flex, I move it back until I feel that with the flex of the material, given that, I'll be able to grab this out. And that's how I came on to this distance here. And I think this is about three quarters of an inch and we'll measure it in a second. But you see, you can throw it in there and you can grab it out. And it's not, if you went a little smaller, you know, you're bound by this limit right here. You can only fold it back so far, and this just wouldn't be, wouldn't be comfortable to use. And so if we go here, we measure this, 
we're about uh, five, seven eighths. So we're gonna say three quarters should be fine. And so I've written down all of our measurements here. And now this is where the efficiency comes in because what we're doing is we're taking all the guesswork out. A lot of these are constants. The more wallets you make, the more you're gonna be able to use these measurements. You're gonna be able to say, you don't have to go and measure a card, right? You don't, every project you're not like, okay, well, three quarters, three and three eighths, and, and then we need our, you know that you, with the stitching line that you use, a four inch wide pocket is gonna be perfect. You know that if you want a wallet that you can slide, uh, have a hidden pocket underneath, you know that that three quarter inch gap is going to be good to go. So you can take all of that work out the next wallet that you design. What I'm showing you right now is, if you've never used designed a wallet before, this is sort of the exploratory stuff that you're gonna have to do, maybe make a couple samples, but once you lay that foundation for yourself, you're gonna be able to whiz through this process super, super fast. So the next thing we're gonna do is, we have now, we have a four inch wide and a three inch gap, and this is gonna be times two here. So we need eight and three quarters inches on our interior. So what I'm gonna do is, well, I'm gonna move these first. So now what I can start doing is I can actually start sketching the physical wallet itself. So we're gonna start with a rectangle here, and this is what we know, right? This is gonna be eight and three quarters across like this, right? Then we're gonna have a pocket on one side and a pocket on the other. This is gonna be four inches. This is gonna be four inches. And this is gonna be three quarters of an inch. And that's pretty much, I mean, that's a wallet. If this is short enough, you've just designed a wallet without any real creativity, which is maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you just want to be able to make your own patterns of simple shapes, or maybe you just, you weren't really sure how to get started. This is how you start and it's completely objective. It's just numbers and measuring and there's nothing else that's holding you back from doing it. The next step, we're gonna make it pretty. So we're gonna take this, all of our objective measurements, we'll call them, and we're gonna set those aside, right? And then we're gonna set ourselves up with another drawing and and these you know you don't have to use your ruler here to make this perfect because you're just sketching right now you're getting shapes you're getting shapes so that we know I'm not even gonna put the numbers we know that this is roughly what we're our baseline our objective baseline of what this wallet's gonna have to look like to function the way that we need it to function the next step is a lot more subjective. This is where the creative design comes in. So as it stands, you know, um, we have, everything works horizontally. Now, remember before when I said that you don't really need to worry about the measurement of a dollar uh, or whatever currency you're designing for. Well, in this case, say we wanted these pockets, there to be no other pockets, and we just wanted to slide cards under here and cards under here. Well, we would take our measurement, which is uh, two and one eighths, and we would, add our tolerances in, so let's say another half inch, and we would be right around uh, two and three quarters inches tall. The problem with that is that a bill is two and a half inches tall. So to cover a whole bill, you're gonna wanna be closer to three inches because remember you have a tolerance on the bottom with your stitching and if you're stitching across the top, you need another tolerance. And we're not gonna do that. We want a couple extra pockets here. So this is gonna be our first sketch, right? We want at least one pocket on top and we're gonna do one pocket on the bottom because remember, if we go back to who we're making this for, we want eight to 10 cards to hold here. Now they don't need to be all separated like we talked about before because we want it to be kind of slim, but we needed a little separation. So then we go back here and we say, okay, well, I want at least one card pocket on top and one card pocket underneath. And that gives us one, two, three, four card pockets total. Now that would be two cards in each pocket, which our customer is okay with because it also saves us uh, four layers of leather. Now, you, again, you can skive those away and make them very thin, um, but we're also on a budget here. So that's all time that would equate to extra cost for the wallet. And this is gonna be probably the most efficient design using the measurements that we have to get what we need out. Now we can start drawing um, our shapes to make it look really nice. This is where the fun part comes in. You know from your drawings, what you need to do to make this piece function. But beyond that, there aren't really any limits. You can draw inspiration from anything with the way that you design the inside of the wallet. Take for this, for example, this is a long wallet I designed. Now we're on Cape Cod, which is by the ocean. So for this piece, these are waves and this is a setting sun. That's where I found inspiration in designing this. Now you could also do something like this, which is just simply 
straight pockets. They work great. As long as your tolerances are good, you're able to grab. That's all you need. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, this is a beautiful aesthetic, nice and simple. But if you want to express yourself, if, you, if you're designing for someone who has a specific interest, you can get a little more in depth and you can say, hey, I know you, well, we'll take this for instance, I know you like to surf. Um, so we have a nice little uh, call to the water and the setting sun and all that kind of stuff. And so we're going to dive in now and we're going to figure out what kind of shapes that we want to include in this design before we start making our pattern. We're going to use all of these little wallet shapes to just start sketching. And this is a little bit different for everybody, right? So what I like to do first is I'll just start with like, okay, one I'll do our bare minimum, right? Um, with some people, maybe they want four or, you know, eight card slots total. So I know, okay, at the very minimum, this is what we got to do. With our current uh, customer that we're making this for, we know that this is right about where we want to start. Single card pocket on top, like we went through before. Then everyone's a little bit different. Maybe you say, well, my customer really likes to ski in the mountains. And so I want my pockets to look like little mountains, right? And I don't, disclaimer, I don't know the function, how this would function. But as you can see, we got a little mountain range there. So maybe you do this in one color, you do this in another color, and it really sticks out and the person opens their wallet and they say, oh my God, that's those are those are mountains. And that's one of the sort of the little magic moments of, of making everything custom is that you get to tailor your product specifically to your customer. So I'll just go through a lot of the times and I'll just say, okay, well, you know, I have a lot of standards that I have to kind of get out of my system first. Um, you know, you got your typical you, maybe I, I do the wave a lot. I like that one. Um, maybe we'll go a little more severe and we'll, we'll go like this, or maybe we want to do, they go the same way, right? Um, maybe you can, and you can bring it all the way across. So maybe you want something asymmetrical. You want, uh, again, a wave or something like that. Um, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you, you, sometimes you think, okay, well maybe, oh, that would be really cool. You don't see wallets like that a lot. And then you would go into, cut a little piece of leather out and you go, oh, well, you don't see wallets a lot like that a lot. Cause, cause that kind of, that flap doesn't, doesn't really work. And, and when I put this card under here, well, you can't really grab it. And so that's where this is really helpful. And so I'll go through maybe seven or eight pieces of, of paper with this printout on it, just to kind of, just to kind of get all my ideas out before getting into um, making the actual pattern and taking the specific measurements. Because a lot of these pocket shapes, depending on how complicated it is, and if you have multiples as well, I think this is a very simple design just for showing you guys how I gonna go through the process. But if you get into multiple pockets, so say you want like um, a mountain range and you're like this, but then you say, well, what if I did another mountain range that kind of went like this, right? Well, when you make the pattern, you're gonna have to figure out what the distance here is for your card slots. Because maybe you're gonna do like a, a standard tea pocket design where it kind of goes in like this and then down. That's gonna be different everywhere. And so it allows you to kind of th work through a lot more visually on paper than getting straight into the project and kind of winging it. And, and that works for some people. I did that for a long time and, and it works. It's just when you get into one, I know a lot of folks want to do this professionally. You have to maximize every moment that you have to stay in the game, essentially. Um, you can't be spending seven or eight hours designing a single piece um, because it's really hard to, to charge enough to cover that cost for you. Um, and so this is how I generally will start to get, start to formulate my actual pattern. And so once you've done this a few times, right, and you have all of your objective measurements, you can store these, these little pattern worksheets on your computer or whatever. And this is ideally where you want to start a project. If it's something like a bifold, if you're designing a custom case for uh, some specific product, you're obviously going to have to start completely from scratch, but this is a good way to um, further speed up the process and make things more efficient is that someone says to you, Hey, I'd like, I'd like a bifold, a custom bifold. You pull this out. You've done all that other work in the video. This is where you start. And, and so what I've done here is I think I've come upon 
the shape and and I'm happy it happened like this because you can see it all on one piece of paper right and I did it in pencil so I'm, I'm gonna trace over it for you so the way I started with this is uh, my friend's last name starts with an H so I was thinking well you know maybe we'll make it a little interesting and we'll kind of make it look a little bit like an H but that seemed a little too severe to me so so then I started kind of I kind of played with it a little bit and I went, oh, I like that but it kind of looks like a manila folder and then I moved sort of um, more into the center here right and right about here I sent him some pictures and I said hey what, what do you think how, how do you like this and he goes oh it's, it's okay but um you know I like something a little more simple so I started kind of just I started simplifying that shape a little bit and then maybe I thought well you know maybe I could round these corners too so that you can kind of pull out from here and what we ended up settling on is it's really simple and this whole process before this not included because I had this all done already from past wallets that I made um, you know this whole process was was maybe two or three sheets of, of, of this workbook paper and so so we settled on this. It's nice. It's it's very sleek. It adds a little bit of interest. Um, but most importantly, uh, what he liked was that with this shape, you know, he has a lot of cards he doesn't use all the time. So he can store those under here. And he has two or three cards that he uses the most. And so what this will allow him to do is he can store all of his cards under here, right? But then the two cards that he uses all the time, or the three cards, he can just grab them right out. And it's very sleek on the outside. It kind of protects everything the card you know I've drawn the card in right here and here so you can kind of get an overview of what the full interior of the wall will look like um, but it'll protect everything and also you know you can put your branding right there you can put maybe a monogram right there you have some room if you want to use um, some cool if you want a tool or do whatever um, and so that's the design that we ended up with but you know it only took us three workbook pages and this is a custom design you know, so once you have all that other work done, you're good to go. This is a great way to kind of speed up that process. I've drawn our sketch a little bit bigger. And what I've also done is I've put in all of the measurements that we have into this drawing. And now this isn't to scale or anything, but we don't need it to be to scale. Our last step before we make a pattern, or we need to figure out what our uh, vertical measurements need to be. And so what I'm gonna do is, I have a card here. We know that we need two and one eighth plus our tolerances from the bottom to this top here. Now, if we look back to our sketch, the idea is to have the card go underneath this here, um, and then it's gonna come out and you're gonna peek through and you're gonna see it and be able to grab it right here. So that tells me that th this distance from the top of the pocket to the bottom needs to be at least the height of the card, which we know is two and one eighth. Then we're gonna add a quarter inch tolerance for our stitching. Um, and so we're gonna be two and three eighths. So we're gonna make that two and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pencil in two and one half inches. It's gonna go from there to there. Then I need this inner seam because that way we can figure out really easy without having to sketch and all that kind of stuff, what our angle is gonna be. All I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna grab a card like this. And then I'm gonna measure from here, that looks to be about uh, one and a half inches. So that tells me that, what's that? Uh, five eighths of an inch we need for a reveal to be comfortable to grab. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna put one and one half inches here. So now we have two and a half inches. How tall do we want this to be? You can do some cutting of paper. So you have, you know, you're going to be four by two and a half here, one and a half here. You can cut your curve in. Um, I happen to just really like a three and a half inch tall bifold. And I think that it'd almost be a third and a third and, or a one third and two thirds if we made this one inch on top. So we know now if we had one inch plus two and a half inches, we know that our overall height is gonna be three and one half inches. So we know that our bifolds eight and three quarters across on the inside. We know that it's three and a half inches tall. That means we know our measurements of our under pocket, which is gonna be three and a half by four inches. And we also know that our pocket's gonna be two and a half inches tall on one side, one and a half inches on the other, and four inches across. And so we can now bring this into a computer or we can draw it by hand um, and draft our pattern. And we're not gonna be doing that in this video because it's already way too long. Um, but 
what you would do is you would just take all these measurements. You could do it on graph paper. You could do it in a, um, a computer program like Illustrator. That's what I use. And you would just simply make all of these shapes and that's it. Now for the exterior of the bifold, this is a really simple one. Um, if you look, um, and anyone who's tried to make a bifold and made the interior piece and the exterior piece the same length and then sewn it together, you know it doesn't close. And that's because of all the layers of leather. So what you need to do is, and you can see it better here, the exterior needs to be longer than the interior piece. Um, and because there are no pockets or anything on the shell, there's no reason to really draw anything here. Uh, we know it's gonna be a plain piece that's gonna be three and a half inches tall. That stays the same, the vertical measurement. But the uh, horizontal measurement, we're just gonna make this a half inch longer than this piece. And what that allows is when it closes, you see how there's a little tiny gap there? That's gonna allow you to open and close the wallet. And I like, it pops open so you can get stuff, but when you close it, it stays shut. Um, that's gonna allow the wallet to function. And so we have this and we have, now we have our other measurements um, and we're gonna bring that on the computer and make a pattern for it. And here we go. So as you can see, um, I, I just put this into the computer. I use Adobe Illustrator, but you can use um, quarter inch graph paper. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can use quarter inch graph paper, transfer all of your measurements, which is what we had here, onto the graph paper, and then just uh, transfer onto heavy cardstock. Uh, the other thing is Weaver sells, this is called uh, pattern plastic. And so if you're gonna be making more than one wallet in this design, you transfer your design onto this, and this is like a, a nice thick plastic, but you can still cut it with um, an X-Acto blade or scissors or whatever, and it holds up way better because once you um, take your pattern and separate it and cut out a uh, heavy cardstock, they're really only good for one or two copies before your um, before your edges get a little um, messed up from, from the awl and stuff. Um, and so thank you guys for watching. I hope this was super helpful. And, uh, you know, this is the first time we're doing this, so uh, leave in your thoughts in the comments if you want us to keep doing this kind of stuff. If you want us to cover other stuff, um, we're more than happy to. I, I think that this might be something really fun to get into. Uh, so thanks so much.